Our next big result is going to apply to circulation or flux along a closed curve in the plane. Let's motivate this deep theorem with a simple example or two. Let's consider the following one form in the plane. This one form alpha is given by x dy. Let's integrate this over a planar rectangle. Now what does x dy look like? Well, it looks something like this. It is measuring the change in y and then rescaling it by the x coordinate. So along the y-axis, when x is 0, this vanishes. For positive values of x, this measures change in y oriented up and then rescaled by x. And then for negative values of x, it's oriented oppositely. OK, so what do we do? We have to integrate this over the boundary of a rectangle in the plane. Let's call that curve gamma. Let's say that it goes from a to b in the x-coordinate and c to d in the y-coordinate. And let's say that it's oriented in this counterclockwise direction. OK, now what would, we, what would we compute in this case? Well, there are four different paths in this rectangle. But really, those horizontal ones are invisible to dy because there's no change in y along those horizontal paths. So it's really only the left and the right hand sides that we have to worry about for this integral. Let's call them gamma 1 on the left and gamma 2 on the right. And let's be really careful. Let's be really formal and actually parameterize these. Gamma 1 of t is going to be given by a for the x-coordinate and d minus quantity d minus c e times t as t goes from 0 to 1. Likewise, gamma 2 is going to be b for the x-coordinate. And then to get the orientation right on the y-coordinate, we do c plus quantity d minus c e times t. OK, now, now that we've got that, we can plug this into the integral for x dy. If we integrate first over gamma 1, we're integrating a for x times minus quantity d minus c dt for dy. And then integrating this with respect to t as t goes from 0 to 1. That is simply minus a times quantity d minus c. To integrate over gamma 2, I plug in b for x. And then for dy, I have quantity d minus c times dt. That integral, as t goes from 0 to 1, is simply b times quantity d minus c. And so we see that the integral over this entire rectangular path is the sum of these two, which factors as quantity b minus a times d minus c. Now, of course, we, we really didn't need to do all that to parameterize these, these straight line paths. Look, it's just dy, the change in y, times x, which is a constant along these two paths. So you know, we could have saved ourselves a little bit of time there. But here we go. That's it. We've got the result. And notice that this is really the area of that rectangle. What an interesting one form. Hmm. I wonder what happens if we change things up a bit. Let's say instead of integrating over a rectangular path, we integrate over a circular path. Let's say we fix some center, I don't know, x naught comma y naught, and then pick a radius, let's say capital R. What happens in this case? Well, in this case, we can't do that integral in our head. Uh, we've got to think about what is happening. Only the vertical component of the motion along this path is seen by this one form. So let's parameterize this. Let's say that gamma of t is given by x naught plus r cosine t and y naught plus r sine t as t goes from 0 to 2 pi. Now the integral of x dy along this curve is given by what? For x, we get quantity x naught plus r cosine t. For dy, we get r cosine t dt. And we integrate as t goes from 0 to 2 pi. This is going to split up into two terms, the integral of x naught r cosine t and the integral of r squared cosine squared t, in both cases as t goes from 0 to 2 pi. Now that first integral, that goes away because you're integrating cosine 
over a full zero to two pi period. So the only thing that we have to do is to remember how to integrate cosine squared of t. You might want to go back and review that from single variable calculus, that whole double angle formula thing. In the end, what we're going to get is one half t times r squared as t goes from zero to two pi. That's a final answer of pi r squared. That's interesting. That's the area of this circle. What a coincidence. We must have gotten lucky there, huh? No, there's no such thing as luck in mathematics. There's only truth. And what we're about to see is a truth, a really big truth.